What we're going to be going over here is in a learning or an experience curve, and we're going to be specifically looking at the cumulative average model or the rights model. So when we're talking about learning curves, this is where we start out with a new product or a new production of a new product here, and it's going to take us a certain number of hours here to produce that uh, starting at our starting rate here. We're going to take a certain number of hours to produce that product, but as we gain experience here, the number of hours that it's going to require to uh, produce the product is going to decrease because we're going to have more experience and based on that experience we set up this learning curve here and that's going to be where we're going to have to determine based on the number of units produced here and I'm just showing from 0 to 20 here we're going to have to calculate the average time here per unit so what we're going to look at is setting up this learning curve and how we calculate this average time per unit and then we'll also look at how we look at calculate the total time for uh, based on a, a certain number of product that we're produ producing here. So the first thing, let's understand our terminology here with the learning curve here. So let's go over here. So what we have to deal with, we have two, we have our improvement rate and uh, our example is going to be based on a 20% improvement rate and then we're going to have a learning rate here of 80% and our example is going to be based on that and also I'm going to show the 10% uh, improvement rate versus the 90 percent a learning rate just to make that comparison okay so those are our definitions as far as our different percentages here improvement rate and the learning rate in this case just remember the improvement rate here is less than our learning rate and percentage wise so what we're talking about here with an 80 percent uh, learning curve it means that our cumulative average time or cost is going to decrease by 20 percent here each time our output doubles. So if you're looking at, in this case, a 90% learning curve, it means that our cumulative time is only going to decrease by 10%, just to make that clear here. So let's go back to our graph here. So I'm showing our 80% here in red versus our 90% here uh, learning rate here in green here. Just to make it clear here when we're talking, 90% sounds like a, oh, that sounds like a better learning rate here than the 80%, but in fact it isn't, because with the 90% learning rate, you only have a 10% improvement rate. So as your product, as you increase the number of your product here and you double your output, you're only from, let's say, 2 to 4 here, 2 to 4 units showing, 2 to 4 here, and it's, you're only having a 10% improvement on the average time or reducing your average time only by 20 percent so if we look at it our 80 percent that's actually a, a better learning rate because our improvement rate here is 20 percent so just looking at our times here so go from t uh well we're starting out the first uh, unit here is going to be based on 100 hours so our second unit here is at 80 hours that is uh the fact here that y our average time output is 20 percent less for each time we double our output. So if we go from two here at 80 hours here to four out uh, to four output here at four, we've moved down from 80 to 64, which means we've actually reduced our uh, average time here by 20%. And if we look at it from four to four to eight here, we had 64 here for four and eight, we're down to 51. Again, what if you do the arithmetic here, you're going to find out that our we've reduced our average time here. By 20% each time we double our output here. So what we have to do is we have to come up with this our labor hours per unit these curves here this is what we're looking at based on our average time and then we'll also look at in total time but so sticking with our average time here on a unit basis this is where we're going to have to develop that equation here it's going to be y our average time here is going to equal a times x time raised to the power of b here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at how we uh, set up our equation here, and we'll, we'll come back to this graph here. Okay, so for our cumulative average learning model, again, that was our equation here, y equals a, which a here is the time or cost required to produce the first unit here. That was 100 that we're looking at here. And then y, that was our cumulative average time on a per unit basis. That's what we're looking at in time on a per unit basis. And then x here, that's going to be the, that up here, is a cumulative number of units produced. That's In our case, I've just got a set of learning curve set up from 0 to 20 units here. And then b, x is raised to the power of b here. So this is really the key here, this b here showing it in red. That's good. If you looked at it, it would be a slope of the function plotted on log log graph here. Otherwise, b, which we're going to be working with here, equals the log of the learning rate, 
in this case we're going to base it on point 0.80 here divided by the log of base 2. Okay so for our 80 percent learning curve here b equals again the log here of our learn learning rate 0 0.80 divided by the log of base 2 here. So what you do here and we're, we're going to come up with this answer here it's going to be negative 0.9691 and that's going to be for the log of 0.8 here divided by the log of base 2 is 0.310 if you put it into your calculator and that division here gives you a minus 3.22 so really while we're looking at is if you look at it in these terms of the log of base 2 raised or to the our learning rate here 80 percent of x whatever your learning rate is you put it in here so that's really looking at a natural log of x here whatever your learning rate is divided by uh, natural log of base 2 here, shown here, natural log. Learning rate, 0 0.80 here, divided by the uh, log of, natural log here, 0 0.2.0 here. Okay, so for our first unit, A here required, uh, say one required 100 hours here. So A, that was our, in our uh, equation here, A with that 100 represents it. So what we're actually looking at is why that would be the average time per unit here. That's going to equal A, 100 hours here. X is the units that we're producing. At whatever unit production we have at the time, that was going from that 0 to 20, raised to the power here of B here, that log of learning rate divided by log of base 2, minus 0.322. So that's our general equation here. Y, A, 100, X, whatever units we have for X, and B here is what we calculated, minus 3.22. So for the cumulative total hours here or cost. What we calculated here was on a per unit basis here for y. So uh, for our cumulative total hours, all we're going to do is take x, again, x times it. This, this x here was included for the uh, average unit per time here, but now we have to, for our total hours, we just have to take x times it again here. So x times our, that's going to be for our particular output here for our this is where we're going to determine again our total labor hours here. So x, whatever we have for that times y, equals x times our y, what we had here, x times a quantity 100 for uh, cost of the first unit here times whatever oh, what we're putting at raised to uh, that uh, learning our 80 based on our learning 80 percent here minus 3.22. So the uh, idea is here for our total time all you're going to take is x remember x times x times x to the b here really equals x raised to the 1 plus b here. So in our equation here, this is for our total cumulative, it's x times y equals a, the cumulative hours, or for cost of our first unit here, time, race, times x number of units raised to the 1 plus b here. So what we're looking at, uh, the cumulative total labor hours here, remember this point, is going to be 1 here. And it happens to be, we're going to add the b, it's a negative b here, and that was... Uh, minus 3.219 here, 1 minus 3.219 here. That was that for our learning rate that we had up here. Now that's 1 minus that our learning rate log here is going to equal 0.678 here. So that's just how we got down to our cumulative total labor hours here. x times y equals a cost of the first unit here uh, uh, times number of units here. And then that 1 minus 3.2 here, 1 plus the b here, equals 0.678. Went through all this arithmetic just to, so you understood how to calculate uh, looking at the total uh, unit here, or the first unit, whatever, on a per unit basis that you're looking at here to determine uh, what it was going to cost you on a per, or t hours on a per unit basis, and just took it times the number of units your output here to come up with the cumulative total labor hours here. That's all I did here. All right, so we've done that proof here to come up with our uh, generalized equation here. Y equals A, uh, the cost of the first unit here raised to whatever times x, the number of units raised to b here. And then we did that. That was for our per unit basis. And then we did it here to come up with our total time here. Okay, so let's go back to our graph here. Okay, so for our learning and experience curve here, for our unit time, that was that average time per unit, we cut this line here, whatever this line is here, y equals a cost of the first unit here 100 in this case raised our times x the number of units produced here 100 was a here cost of the first unit raised to that power to raise to i'm calling it b1 here because we're going to have another b to deal with here so that was minus 3.22 so if you put that 
solve that just for whatever unit you have here, put it into your simple equation, that's going to give you your average time per unit. Okay. So just remember here when we were talking about this improvement rate, say we went, let's talk about that here. So at eight units here, our average time per unit, had we put it in that equation, we're going to come on 51 hours here. Now, if we double our production up to 16 uh, units here, we're going to go down to 40. Average time per unit is going to be 40 hours here per unit. So what we've done here is we've reduced from 51 at 8 hours per unit down to 40 at 16 hours per unit. And that was really a 20% less here, 20% uh, improvement rate. Our improvement rate here was based on 20% uh, here. So 50, uh, 40 here is 20% less than 51 here based on our average time, or doubling our output here. Okay, so that's for our unit time. Now let's go down and let's look at our total time. Okay, same thing here, total time. In this case, our total time in hours here based on the number of units that we put out here. So we have those X number of units that were produced here, and then our total time is just X times Y here, that equation had here. So again, for our 90%, which I'm showing here, and the green line here, you can see here, your total time, as the number of units you're producing here, your total time is in great, increasing at a greater rate here, or you have a greater total time here based on that 90% learning rate here versus the 80% I'm showing here. The 80% is this red one. Just, just what we did up above here. Just the 90% isn't as good as the 80% here. That's all I'm showing. So what we've done here, this the equation for this line here, is remember that x, y equals a, x raised to b2. And I'm saying b2 is 1 minus our b1, or that learning rate, uh, the log of our learning rate here divided by the log of base 2 here. So that's our equation here for our total cumulative time here. x times y, x would be the number of units here. And y, that was what we calculated average time per unit up above. But then when we, t when we did our arithmetic here, we come up with the equation x times y, x units times our, our y total hours here is going to be x times y here. That's equal to a x raised to b2, which was that amount here, 6.78. That's all I'm saying here. b2 is that uh, 1 minus whatever the log of our uh, learning rate here, based on just the learning rate itself here. Okay, so what we're talking about here each time we increase our learning, our we increase our learn, or we increase our output here. Say from two to four here. Say from two to four. We're moving from total uh, total unit hours here would be 160 here at two units. At four, we're going to come up with 256. So really, all you're doing here is taking uh, when two time every time we double our production, two times our production here. In this case, two to four here. We're going our increases here two times the learning rate, two times 0 0.80, which is 1.6. So if we took 1.6 times 160, we're going to get 256, and that's increasing our, doubling our production from 2 to 4. We product, double our production here from 4 to 8. Uh, we're going to just take uh, 1.6 here times 256, we'll get 409 here, and so on. At 4, at 8, our production, a number of units produced here at 8 units, when we double our production to 16 units here, it's just going to be 409 here times 1.6 here. All right, and that would be the same here if we had we worked it out here for our learning rate here based on 90%, our total time here based on 90%. Just to make the point here, we just went through these two curves here, went through a lot of time, but we had to come up with our generalized formula here to determine our total uh, time here in hours based on our number of units produced. And then we looked at the, that, and that was based on our fact that we had to determine our average time per unit first here. And it was simply uh, the difference here in our total, based our total time was just taking our x output times uh, x number of units produced here times what we calculated here in the average time per unit and then we had to take and we had to factor in that those that x uh, x b here or x times uh, x are raised to the power of b equals uh, x but equals here one 
plus b and b is whatever you have for your learning right here, not to confuse things. Okay, so that'll pretty much summarize our discussion here on this learning and experience curve and our accumulative average model here or the rights model.